Hello everybody and welcome back to another video here on the channel. Now today, we're going to be doing another project related video and this one, as you can probably tell from the title, we're going to be trying to answer one simple question and that is, can we install a distribution of Linux on the Power Mac G5 as you can see right here. Now, this is not the $2.50 Power Mac G5 that I featured in one of my thrift store finds videos. This is actually one that I had um, before uh, that um, Power Mac G5 that I showcased in that video. This one I actually bought along with a couple of other uh, Macintosh computers um, in a, a lot uh, at, um, at a garage sale. I just never got around to featuring it on my channel. Um, but yeah, we're, you know, we're going to be seeing if we can install a distribution of uh, Linux on this thing. And you might be wondering why that we're going to be doing that, why you would want to do this. And, you know, to give you guys the most simple reason that I can is pretty much to kind of install more updated software and to get more, uh, you know, actual support for this machine as the latest version of OS 10 that can run on this machine is 10.5, which is uh, OS 10 Leopard which was, I think, last updated in around 2009. Uh, that is the last version that, um, or of OS X that Apple has made that supports the PowerPC architecture, which is the um, actual processor architecture that this machine uses. Um, so we're, we're not actually able to get any official um, OS updates from Apple, but there are many distributions of Linux that we can use um, that we can uh, you know, uh, install on here that are still updated today, and you know you can install obviously like much newer programs, much better software, and stay safe when you're actually using uh, you know machines like this, as you know really using uh, an uh, operating system from 2009. Um, you're you're kind of open to a lot of uh, vulnerability as you know there's probably a lot of um, uh, security updates that you're not really going to actually have installed on this computer because Apple hasn't updated OS 10.5 since probably 2009 or 10, which is six or seven years ago. So I have, um, I actually haven't, you know, burnt it yet, but I'm going to be doing that uh, very briefly here. But we're going to be um, burning a distribution of uh, Linux. This is going to be L Ubuntu or uh, Lubuntu. I believe this is going to be 14.04 which is the long-term support uh, release. And I was not able to find the latest version uh, of Ubuntu or uh, L Ubuntu to actually download um, that supports the PowerPC architecture. So I'm not sure if they're actually going to be supporting the PowerPC architecture anymore. But this, is, this still has three years um, of long-term support left on it. I believe that this came out about you know one or two years ago. Um, and the LTS uh, moniker basically means, as I said, the long-term support release. So this basically gets uh, support for a longer period of time than a uh, traditional uh, release of Ubuntu or of El Ubuntu. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be burning that ISO image to this CD right here. We're going to be putting it into the G5. And we're, we're going to be seeing what happens if we can actually do this. Um, and what happens, you know, like if there's any problems, and this might actually, you know, help some of you guys out there that are trying to actually do this for yourself. Um, so I'm going to get this all set up, and I'll be right back. All right, so we are all set up here. We have the image burned to the CD, or to the DVD, rather, and we're going to be turning on the Power Mac G5, um, putting this thing in, and we're going to see what happens. So let's just... Um, Turn this thing on. Now, I do have to say that this computer is very loud. Um, it can get, it's, it's going to get loud probably pretty quickly here. And I don't actually have an eject button on this keyboard that I'm using. So I'm probably going to have to boot into OS X itself and, um, you know, do it that way. So everything should work. I I had to use a DVI to VGA adapter to actually um, get it to work on this monitor. Open SuperDrive. Okay, so it's F12. Um, oh, that's right. This, uh, this SuperDrive, you have to hold the, 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 uh, door down for it to eject because the actual, like, uh, door mechanism is kind of broken to where, let me just kind of show you here. So it's F12. So if I press F12, it'll try to, like, bring the door hatch down, but it doesn't, like, it's not able to move it all the way, so you have to just kind of force it down, 
and then press the key and it's trying to open dashboard for some reason. So let me try it again. And there it goes. You, you kind of got to force it sometimes. So we've got the image on this CD right here. I'm just going to push it back in because I don't feel like messing around with it uh, on OS X here. And it is really annoying how there's no physical button on here. Um, so we'll just get rid of I don't know why dashboard opened. Okay, it's F10 for dashboard, I guess. So I don't think there's any sort of like installer on here. Like that we can, like it'll just go in here and like let us reboot, yeah, so we just gotta actually boot from the CD itself so we're gonna just do that so we'll go restart here and I'm gonna try to press the C key, I'm pretty sure it's the C key to boot from the CD um, one of the things that I'm gonna try to do is keep the OS 10.5 uh, partition on here as I do want to see if, because I'm going to be trying to do a couple of uh, future videos with this machine, and I'm going to try to see how um, that OS 10.5 compares to this version of uh, Linux that we have on here, and we'll probably be doing some uh, comparison tests and, and things like that. So I'm holding down the C key right now, so it, so the uh, super drive should start to spin up here. Okay, so it says uh, basically welcome to uh, Lubuntu, and I'm sure that somebody's going to tell me in the comments that I'm saying that wrong. I'm pretty sure it's Lubuntu, um, but we're just going to use the uh, default live option, which is what we want. There, there, there are actually two different um, ISO images on the website. One of them was uh, the live option, which is this one. And there was a uh, alternate ISO, which I guess is for if the live option doesn't work. Um, we might have to use that uh, if this one, you know, doesn't work, which we're I'm I'm hoping that it does. But the uh, alternate option basically uses the text only uh, installer, basically. And you can see the, or you can probably hear that, that the G5 is starting to spin up. It's getting really like getting really going there. <laughs> um, so we are already, right off the bat, having a couple of display issues. I'm not really sure why this is. You can see that we kind of have this black line going down the screen. That might be an issue that could be fixed when we install the actual uh, you know, display driver. You can see here that we are in the actual OS itself. And wow, look at that. We like open it up and there's this black bar that just goes across the screen. Um, yeah, I have no idea why that is. That's hopefully not going to be happening when we actually like install this. Um, but yeah, we are in the like live CD mode here, which pretty much lets you try out the OS itself. So we're just going to go to install. So yeah, as I mentioned uh, earlier, this is version 14.04, which is a long-term support release or uh, service release. And pretty much what that means is you're able to get more, uh, like a longer lifespan of support out of this release without having to update it, um, which is perfect for older hardware like this. We're going to be using this, and hopefully it will let me, um, you know, partition the actual hard drive. So we're going to, you know, th th this looks pretty much like the standard uh, Ubuntu installer here. Um, the only difference is, is it booted straight in uh, to the uh, live CD actual environment here, as opposed to letting you choose if you want to, you know, try it out or install it, which is something that it kind of does now. I'm not sure if it, if it did this back in 14.04, or if it's something that is you know specific to the PowerPC release. Um, we're going to choose install third-party software because I'm just going to you know it's always cool to have some of this stuff on here, and this um, you know machine has has plenty of space on it. I think there's like a like a 250 gig drive in here, and here we go. So this is where it's going to ask us if we want to replace Mac OS 10 with Ubuntu or with Lubuntu. We want to, you know, which we're not going to do. We're going to do something else. And it also allows us to uh, encrypt the volume, which you might want to do. I'm not going to bother doing that because there's, there's you know, really no need, at least for me. But, you know, you might want to do that. And it does give you the option, which is very nice. So apparently support is not implemented for um, changing the size of HFS plus volumes, which is the volume that, you know, you know Mac OS X is on. So I guess the only way of doing this is we're going to have to, you know, completely wipe this partition, which is something that I wanted to avoid doing. Okay, so I went back after changing some settings uh, in the partition 
um, like manager, and it is now giving me the option to install uh, Lubuntu alongside Mac OS X. So we're going to try doing that and seeing seeing what happens. I'm not sure if I screwed something up in the installer, but I don't know. It seems to be working fine. Hopefully, uh, it's going to work fine. And yeah, I may have mentioned that this like little graphical effect here. I, I don't know what this is. I mean, it's this weird, like... It's this weird, like, okay, now there's two cursors. Like, there is some weird stuff going on. Like, okay, now we gotta put in my name and everything. Password. Yeah, I know it's a weak password, but whatever. <laughs> um... Okay, copying files. Let's see, can we expand this at all? We got this tiny, tiny little little screen here. Or this little window. I mean, that's that's it compared to the desktop. This tiny little screen that says copying files. Um, and that's, that's what we got. Um, and above that we have the wonderful uh, screwed up mouse pointer again, so... Um, yeah, I mean, it seems to be working. I don't know if I screwed up the OS X partition, or if we're still going to be able to boot into that. Um, but everything seems to be going okay so far, except for the whole, like, gra you know, graphical problem thing. Which I'm not really sure what to do about. I mean, these colors look really, really weird on this video. I hope that the video comes out okay with the colors and everything, but... It just looks really weird, like, re like really washed out and everything. So, I, I hope it looks okay on like, on the actual video, so, um, yeah, I guess I'm just going to stop the video here, and, uh, I mean, I can't make this any larger, I guess I can do, can I do that? Can I click one of these? How, how do I, can I click that? I do not want to click the X by accident. I, I guess I can't make it any larger. Oh, here we go. Oh, no, I'm just, I've, I was just uh, switching desktops. And if you're wondering what, like, this red light is, that's the mouse that I'm using. Uh, it has a very bright uh, laser on the bottom, and I'm, like, using it up here, and it kind of, you know, every time that I take it off of the mouse pad, it just, it just does that, and it's very bright. So I might have to get, like, a different mouse, because the mouse is actually clear, so, like, the red light shines through it, um, which probably wasn't the best choice for this video. Um, so, yeah, I'm just gonna stop the video here. We're already 30 minutes on this recording. I don't know if this is gonna be a two-part video or not. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, come back once something has happened. Alright, so we are back, and it didn't even really take that long to finish, uh, the installation. It probably took about five minutes, uh, to, you know, go through everything. It, you know, copied everything, uh, over to the hard drive, um, you know, installed everything. And I think that we're done. Uh, we're just gonna click on Restart Now here and see what happens. Okay, so I, I gotta click a little bit, like, uh, you know, below the button for it to actually, like, register as a button push. Um, and the first thing I'm gonna wonder is if these display... Whoa. Okay. <laughs> um, the first thing I'm gonna wonder is if these, uh, w like, bizarro, uh, like, display issues are, are fixed or not. I don't know what this is. Um, is it going to restart on its own, or are we going to have to force shutdown? I don't hear the computer doing anything. Oh, here we go. Soft lockup. Stuck for 22 seconds. Bug. Yeah, that, that, that doesn't sound good. This doesn't really look good either. Yeah, I think I'm just going to, I think I'm just going to have to force shut down the machine here. CPU number one stuck. Oh, here we go. Oh, it's doing something. I, I I tried to force shut it off, and it started doing something else. So I don't know if it installed Grub or if it's going to still use the OS X boot manager, and if it's going to just boot into OS X, which is what I don't want. And yeah, here we go. It's doing the same like uh, boot screen things it did before. I guess this is it. I mean, I guess this this is installed. Um, it still looks like terrible. Like the display issues are are still here. Um, yeah, we got... 
150 gigabyte volume error opening permission denied we have bootstrap okay so we got a 256 gig drive in here which is what we have and we've got partition 3 bootstrap is what it's showing in there let me zoom in on this so you can actually see what I'm talking about so bootstrap is what it's showing in the file manager it's showing bootstrap right here and that's just got I mean this isn't a big this is only like one one megabyte so that's just like you know for like I guess booting and stuff for this 150 gig volume which is the one that I made in when I was messing around like in the partition manager it's showing that it's not finding it, sh it says partition type unknown and then it says contents ext4 mounted at media which, which this is this and there's this lost and found folder and I can't open it because we don't have the uh, uh, like this ne like necessary privileges to partition four my mounted at file system root which I can't open I can't oh here we go okay so yeah file system root partition four so I assume it, it is booted off of the hard drive now because this is these are all of the all the normal files and everything it's just on the root of the hard drive all right, so we are back, and a couple of things have happened. Number one was my SD card actually ran out of space, and I had to actually copy all of the footage that I had over to my computer. And the second thing is, um, I, you know, you saw in that, um, well, in the you know previous couple of clips that we were having some uh, major, well, I don't know if you'd say major, but some uh, significant display issues where we were kind of having all those like weird artifacts and everything on the screen, and. I was also not really able to get the internal network card on this computer to work, and I was able to um, view the list of adapters that uh, this machine has in terminal. It is showing that card, but it's not able to actually, you know, utilize it. And I was trying to use some of these USB uh, adapters that I have, which you know, these ones right here, um, and I was not really able to get them them working either. So what I've decided to do is is kind of switch over to a whole different distribution. Um, as I, I, I kind of want to see if, if this um, distro here is going to um, you know, produce the same problems as uh, Lubuntu or Lubuntu. This that we're going to be trying is Kubuntu or Kubuntu, which is the standard Ubuntu installation with uh, KDE as the, as the uh, desktop environment as opposed to GNOME. And me personally, I actually prefer the KDE desktop environment over GNOME, especially the version of GNOME that um, Lubuntu uses, as it's not really modified in any way, and it's you know just uh, basic stripped down GNOME. So we're gonna be trying this out, seeing if it gives us the same problems, and we might actually be able to get this thing on uh, the you know network. I'm not sure, but. As I may have mentioned in the last clip, I was able to get these cards working with many other computers that I have installed uh, many di different distributions of Linux on. And I've tried even you know server versions and it's worked perfectly fine. So I'm hoping that, that uh, this will work. I'm just going to be burning it to a uh, new DVD here. And yeah, we're, we're going to be seeing what happens. Okay, so I literally had to go into the disks program to press the eject button. I mean, that is just, oh God, it's just so frustrating. They don't have a physical button on here. So let's just press this again because I got to have it a certain way. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to put in the CD or the DVD. Um, and yeah, let's just, let's just see what happens here. I'm hoping that this kind of gives us better results um, because these like weird display issues are just kind of bugging me and I want to see if we can get the uh, network adapter working and I mean this might be like I mean we might get the same uh, display issue as we had before um, but I just want to see if this yields something totally different I mean it might and it's always good to kind of test uh, different uh, distributions as they can kind of work differently. Um, I believe that I first noticed it at the boot screen, which should be coming up here pretty soon. So let's see if uh, Kubuntu. 
I don't know if it's Kubuntu, 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 like, I don't know. I'm going to say Kubuntu because it's the easiest to say and it sounds like it because uh, Ubuntu or, yeah, that's how you say Ubuntu. I always say Ubuntu, but it's Ubuntu because I've been told that before. So I'm going to say Kubuntu. And the fans are spinning up once again. Um, Hopefully you, you can't really hear that, you know, so, like as loud as it is um i know that if i were using like the raw camera audio it would be like you know pretty loud but i, I am using like an external microphone like i always do so uh let's see if it does anything different here okay we're uh, trying something again here because it did actually hang on uh just a blank black screen when I tried this before, so I had to boot using video OF only, and I don't know, that might work, it might not, it got past the white screen and it hung on this screen, and while that, like, the, you know, processor was, you know, like, I could hear, like, the fans were, like, constantly spinning up and everything. Okay, so, a slight little change of plans here. I'm not sure if I'm going to be including any of this footage in this video, but I might, just for, you know, I guess, you know, purposes of showing you guys what I've actually done so far in, in more detail, but just to briefly explain, my original plan was to use uh, Lubuntu or Elubuntu, I'm pretty sure it's Lubuntu uh, 14.04, and, you know, install that on here. And that worked, you know, probably the, the best out of the three methods that I tried, as that actually installed, but there were major, uh, you know, display issues, and the machine kept hanging, and it kept kind of, you know, not letting me, you know, do anything on the system, like it would keep locking up, and I'm not really sure why, why that was, so then I shifted into using uh, another distro of Linux that is based off of Ubuntu called uh, Kubuntu, which is basically Ubuntu with uh, the KDE desktop environment as opposed to GNOME. And that would simply hang uh, like on the actual boot screen. When I would type in like any boot flag, I, I tried all of the flags that they, like, you know, people said, oh, if you're having problems, type in this boot flag, try this. It would hang just on a blank black screen and it wouldn't do anything. And they said that that is a, a, a common issue, but they actually said that it was a blank white screen, so I'm not really sure why mine was black. I'm not sure if you guys are having that issue, if you guys have you know tried to do this uh, on your own G5, but I've basically gone through three good DVDs that I've burnt these images to. These are non-rewritable DVDs. I've burnt images to all these, and now they're pretty much worthless. We're about to go through a fourth one over here, because what I have on this DVD is Debian. <laughs> And we're going to be trying Debian with the plain, you know, this is plain uh, vanilla Debian, I guess you could say. There's no modifications that have been done to this, except for the fact that, you know, it's made to run on the, on the PowerPC architecture. So we're going to be trying this and seeing if we get any different results with this. Um, I'm just hoping because, like, I have been wanting to make this video for, like, a while and... So far, it's not really looking too good. I mean, I, I guess I could upload this as kind of like a failure video, but I, I, I did want to kind of get this working, like actually putting links on this G5. Okay, here we go. So we're actually in a text-based installer. Now, one of the options that I tried was the uh, Kubuntu alternate installer, which I was assuming was the text-based one. It didn't do anything either. I just turned out the lights, and you guys should be able to see this. We're going to go with English. We're going to go with United States. We are going to go with American English. But so far, there are no display issues. I mean, this is just like the, you know, text-based, basic-looking installer. But that's a good sign, because the uh, Lubuntu, like installer and everything was just having some weird graphical problems. So for right now, because I can't get anything to work, I'm just going to select ETH0 as the default. I mean, it's not going to find a link at all. Okay, continue. Um, do not configure network at this time, which is probably bad because there's a lot of packages going to have to download. Okay, host name for this system. We're going to do 
Um, Power Mac G5. Okay, root password, we're going to do password, password. We're going to do Michael for the user, username for my account, password, password. Okay, we're in Eastern Time, detecting disks and all other hardware. Loading additional components, here we go. So, this already looks very promising. I did also download the uh, Debian KDE image, but I was kind of um, not sure if, if I was going to use that because I had a feeling that KDE had something to do with the you know boot issue, um, which it might, it might not, I'm not really sure. Um, we're just going to, I mean, I was originally going to try and keep Mac OS X like on you know one uh, partition on the disk and make a new partition and I think when I was going in the actual partition editor in L uh, Lubuntu I think that I may have screwed something up so we're just going to use the entire disk here because I just want to wipe the whole thing we'll do all files in one partition that's fine and yeah, we're just gonna just make just you know let it do everything for us. Um, the right changes to the disk, yes. So it's going to create an ext4 file system. Yeah, I'm just gonna let this thing finish up here, and uh, we'll be back. All right, so we are back, and as you can see, it is asking us to um, insert another CD or DVD. Um, there are actually a couple more images on the actual Debian site that it did offer me to download, um, but it did not say that they were actually required by the installer. So I'm just gonna click on no over here, uh, and this this looks like it is finishing up here. So we're going to, at the moment, only the core system is installed. Um, to use the system needs, you can choose, to tune the system to your needs, you can choose to install one or more of the following predefined collections of software. Um, we're just gonna do both of them, I guess. Okay, so the installation has just finished up. It very nicely uh, ejected the CD-ROM for us, or the, the DVD. I keep saying CD-ROM for some reason, but um, anyway, we're going to uh, you know take that out. I'm going to put it back in the well, like the actual you know door. I'm just going to you know close it. Um, we're going to hit continue. Uh, we're going to. It's just going to say finish up here. It's going to unmount everything, and after this, we should boot right into. Um, uh, to, to the new system and we're going to see if there are any you know graphical problems if the network adapter works um, it, it looks like that the network adapter isn't going to work okay start x hit start x it should uh, pop up with the user interface here alright so we oh, are back okay. and as you well, that doesn't look good. Last clip, we were having a, a you know bit of issue with trying to get Debian to work properly. Um, when I was trying to install, or well, not install, but when I was trying to um, type in start X and boot into the graphical user interface, it you know was giving me that weird uh, graphical error where it would you know kind of freeze and the whole system would actually lock up. So I guess that I kind of lied about Debian being the you know. I guess last hope uh, for this video because I did actually do some further research and found uh, Ubuntu Mate 16.04 which I have burned to this DVD right here. So, so far we've gone through four perfectly good DVDs and counting this one five. So we've gone through a lot of DVDs for this video. Um, and hopefully this will work. I mean, essentially what this is, if you're not familiar with Ubuntu Mate, is it's the uh, popular uh, distro of Linux Ubuntu with the Mate desktop environment as opposed to the GNOME desktop environment. So we're going to be trying this out. I'm hoping it will work. And if not, then that's going to probably wrap it up for this video. I mean, because I don't really know um, what else we can do. But I'm hoping that this will give us uh, some different results. So... We're going to have to turn this machine back on here. 
so yeah, you know, DB and Linux boots, you know, as you would expect it to, and a- a- as I said, like the actual console works. But the only thing that I'm noticing is if even on here, you can kind of see that that weird like line on the uh, left side of the screen is still there, where it kind of you know chops off uh, part of the text. So I think my login was Michael and my password was password. So let's type in, I cannot see in the dark, start X. So yeah, this is what it was doing. I just turned like the actual light back on in the room because I really couldn't see anything. But yeah, this is what it was doing. So I really have no idea, you know, because I mean, I can't do anything. I can't move the mouse. The whole system's locked up. I can't, you know... So I don't know if this is a common issue with trying to, to use Debian on here or what. So we are going to have to, because again, because the Macintosh does not have a uh, eject button on here, we're going to have to uh, manually eject the CD using a paperclip. Um, I could, you know, use the whole like press down like the mouse button while booting but I don't think that's going to work because it installed a whole different bootloader uh, or at least I think it did and I think that I tried it before and it didn't work so if we're going to um, put in this new this is again uh, Ubuntu Mate 16.04 we're going to put this in here and I'm hoping that it allows us to boot from the CD. So yeah, it it does this whole you know thing up here where it basically you know she just says welcome to uh, Ubuntu Mate. Every single distro that I've tried does it this same way, and it just automatically boots live. Um, and every distro that I've tried, except for uh, Lubuntu, which was the first one, and Debian would not get past this screen. Oh, there we go. Okay, perfect. So we've got the uh, uh, Ubuntu Mate uh, boot screen there, although it kind of looks like we got the same, you know, problems with the display, which doesn't look very, very good. But we got this, we got the boot screen, we got somewhere. So we finally got, we finally found a distribution that would get us past the like that blank black screen. So let's just see what this does, because this is a, a fairly new version. I mean, this is, again, 16.04. Um, 16.10 is the newest Ubuntu release. So this is only one version behind, and this is also the LTS release, the uh, long-term support. So this gets uh, extended support for, I think, three or five years. So it's slowly loading the uh, desktop here. I can see it says, like, applications and stuff at the top menu here and it just went away but now it's back again <laughs> like yeah you can see it says applications places system there, there's a firefox icon um i have a mouse pointer uh but again there's still this little oh it's kind of still doing the same thing so maybe just the graphics card in here doesn't play nicely with with linux i don't know i mean that's just because it kind of yeah it does the same thing i, I move it over to the top or yeah to like the left side it does this weird you know like it moves this bar on the side okay so i was able to, to totally fix this by changing the resolution to 1024 by 768 because it was on 1280 by 1024 and to be totally honest i don't even think that that's supported by this monitor anyway well we've gotten this far so let's just finish with uh, Ubuntu made here I mean anyway I mean yeah this is like a way newer version anyway so I mean why not but yeah I mean it works I mean you can see it works perfectly fine now you know th there's no artifacts at all I mean it's still not finding the uh, Wi-Fi card but uh, yeah I mean there, there's none of those like weird artifacts or anything everything's showing up fine so we're just gonna erase the disk that had a uh, Debian on it and just install a uh, Ubuntu mate because why not I mean we've like I said we've gotten this far so yeah guys if you're having problems with uh, installing Linux on a G5 well and it's giving you like display issues like that then change the resolution I mean that's literally what you have to do yeah i mean so i'm just gonna let this thing you know copy its files over it's
probably going to take you know like a good amount of time here so yeah uh, I'm just gonna pause the video here and I'll come back once it's all finished alright so we are back and as you can see it says that the installation has finished up it is completed uh, so we're just going to click on the restart now button over here and hopefully we won't have any of those uh, you know display issues that we were having with uh, Lubuntu and yeah you know I just really can't believe it that it was that simple I thought it was something you know like major or you know something wrong um, oh we have to please remove the installation media okay good thing that it ejects the uh, CD there we go keep this configuration so I'm not sure if that's something with this specific distro but it seems like it's something, you know, because we're having the same problem as I mentioned with uh, Lubuntu, right? We're having the same issue as well. But uh, yeah, I mean, you you know, you can see it here. It is working perfectly fine. We are running off of the hard drive. The only thing is the uh, wireless card. Um, it's only finding the uh, two Ethernet ports in the back, so it's not finding the uh, you know actual wireless card. But everything seems to be working good. We can go to system and about here and mate desktop environment and that is that is probably going to wrap it up for this video of installing linux on the power mac g5 I, I hope you guys enjoyed if you did if this helped you definitely be sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this and if you you know would like to see future videos um on this power mac g5 you know trying to get uh the network adapter working with this um definitely be sure to let me know down in the comments below um, and as always guys, you know, just thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all of your amazing support on the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next video.